Royal Society of Chemistry has been working with ACT Labs for a number of years now. We use a number of their software tools, we work with them fairly closely on some of our projects, and we're working on some future projects that I will discuss a little bit in this presentation. First of all, a little bit about RSC. We are a member society with over 47,000 members worldwide. We're a publisher with world-renowned journals, and we're an innovator in e-science. Uh, certainly a number of our online databases and services produced by the e-science team, such as ChemSpider, ChemSpider Synthetic Pages, and SpectraSchool are very well known. Uh, SpectraSchool is used a lot by educators, by students. Um, ChemSpider is, is used um, across the world by people sourcing information about chemicals. We also participate in a number of grant-based projects. National Chemical Database Service delivers a, a platform to UK academics. We have a semantic web project called Open Facts, with facts standing for a pharmacological concept triple store. Uh, it's a project integrating chemical and biological data, for, primarily for the pharmacological, uh, pharmaceutical industry. And Pharmacy, which is a, a project to harvest, identify, and database the data associated with new natural products extracted from the oceans. The tools that we use from AC Labs include nomenclature generation and conversion, where we take chemicals and create the systematic names, where we cr take chemical names, synonyms, identifiers, systematic names, and convert them back to the chemical structures. That's from, for our text mining projects. We also predict properties for chemicals using the tools. We have a web-based spectral display widget that I will show you where we use it a little later. And we also integrate the interactive lab, or iLab, web-based prediction tools, which also includes, of course, a database lookup. A little bit about ChemSpider. ChemSpider is a free access website. Anybody in the world can use it. Uh, it's for searching about information about chemicals. We have over 28 million chemicals sourced from over 400 data sources, linking together the web. You can access here patent data and publication data, properties, experimental data, predicted data, data of all types related with chemicals. Here we show a very simple search box where you would type in a chemical name, but of course we have structure searching and substructure searching and similarity searching and property searching. There are advanced searches. There's a whole complex layer of capability for searching the database, but most of us are used to Google. And if we want to find out something about Valium, we'll just type in the name. How many of us could draw it? Here's an example of a chemical you probably wouldn't want to draw, cholesterol. To so try and remember all those stereo centers, a little bit tricky. Uh, but so you type in cholesterol, it will bring you to this record. This is the header of the record. You can see the systematic name there highlighted. But we also generate properties such as the monoisotopic mass calculated so that mass spectrometrists can use it for structural elucidation and identification purposes. We generate smiles and inches, and those are useful to chem informaticians. Uh, we have a pile of names and identifiers that have come in from various sources. Not all are algorithmically generated, many are human generated and applied to the, the actual chemical. We do a lot of work curating those. The, the dictionaries become very useful. In the properties info box here, we see that ACD Labs tools have been used to predict properties. You can see log P and, and log D values, uh, density predicted, etc., etc. And under the experimental data tab, when available, we show the experimental data. If you go under the spectral data tab, then you can start to see, certainly not for all 28 million chemicals, but you can find a few thousand spectra that have been deposited. In this case, we've got a proton spectrum, a carbon spectrum, and an EI mass spectrum. The EI mass spectrum came from NIST that was provided uh, with their permission. The CNMR and HMR spectra came from Pacific Lutheran University you will note that they were f they're flagged as open data uh, in some cases and downloadable. Uh, in order to see the spectra, you click on the, on the little uh, spectral box, the green box, and it will show a spectrum like this. In this case, we're displaying it in a Java applet, which was uh, is open source, developed by uh, Bob Lancashire from University of West Indies. Uh, and you can zoom in on this, you can, you can integrate, etc. Uh, again, flagged as open data, that means you can take the data and reuse it, and in this case, a uh, simple download button. Then you can bring it into AC Labs tools, for example. So if any of you are educators, 
download the spectrum, put it into ACD Labs tools. Download and use data with open data licensing. The spectra come from various sources. Some we've taken, we, we asked for permission to download and, and deposit. Some are private collections. Individuals have come along and deposited their data with us. Students, uh, a lot of students have started to deposit data. We have chemical vendors providing us with data. But the majority, de for sure, are deposited by ChemSpider users. If you would like to share your data, and we would love for you to do that, um, and we'll show you why it becomes useful, but please feel free to share your data with us. We take infrared and UV vis, proton carbon, fluorine, phosphorus. We even take 2D, but it needs to be in an image format. Uh, what you would do is you would come to the site and you would find the structure of interest and deposit the spectrum. If the structure is not on there, you can also deposit the structure and then deposit the data against it. You would choose the spectrum that you want to deposit. In this case, I've selected carbon NMR, but you can see a whole range of analytical data types there. There are various types of data that are being deposited. Uh, in all cases, it doesn't have to be JCAMP data, for example, which is our preferred standard data. You could actually deposit images of, of spectra also. We do take them, JPEGs, PNGs, etc. In this case, for this particular structure, the scientist actually acquired a pile of relevant data and deposited it. This is from a gentleman in Germany who used to run an, a, an analytical lab, an NMR spectra, uh, spectroscopy lab, and they've put on the, he's put on the proton spectrum, carbon spectrum. These are again fully zoomable, etc. You can uh, interact with the data. Uh, these are images, but he also deposited these. So this is the cozy. HSQC and HMBC. So a very rich data set for people to, to work with, certainly for students to practice, tra get trained, etc. And to see the available spectra, you just go to chemspider.com and look at the spectra.aspx. So again, where did the data come from? Certainly a lot of ChemSpider users depositing it. We've got some contributions from NIST, but there's some exciting news later that I'll tell you. And we have chemical vendors starting to provide data. And if any of you I would like to participate. I'll give you details later. By providing access to the data with web services, then people can start to do things with them. And web services is a programming layer that we put on top of the database for people to interact with the data. So you can see, get all the spectra information, get the compound information, get the spectrum info. By pulling this information together, other people can do stuff with what we've got available. As an example, Jean-Claude Bradley and Andy Lang have built Spectral Game. This is a site online, free for anybody to use, um, spectralgame.com. And it's to help students practice their uh, spectral interpretation skills, primarily around proton NMR. Uh, certainly we are discussing extending this to other forms of data in the future, infrared, uh, mass spectra, etc. But certainly NMR is, is definitely the place to, to do a lot of the the um, analysis that students will find valuable. What we do is we show initially two structures in a spectrum and you have to choose which matches the spectrum. Simply click on the structure that you believe it is. It, it could be a 50-50 chance of course in this case you just flick a coin and you'll get it but eventually you're going to get caught out just based on luck. It's all probability then. If you get the first one right you move to the second one and after 10 you stop getting only two structures, you start getting three. After ten more, you get four. After ten more, you get five compounds to choose from. And you get to interact with the data in such a way that you start to learn about where the resonances will show up. You start to understand the complexity. You start to understand what real spectra look like. These are taken from the ChemSpider database and include things like impurities and solvents, etc., etc. And we've been making sure that these things work on modern devices, mobile devices. So we have a, a widget, an HTML5 widget, that was uh, from ChemDoodle, where they display the spectra. Uh, one comment, actually, about this this particular uh, capability is if you look at the bottom of the spectrum, it says, if there's no spectrum or the spectrum is reversed, flag it. because 
while we like to check every piece of data that comes in, we can't, and by this gaming approach, the community is telling us when they see errors in the data. They've actually caught misassociations between spectra and structures, where users have incorrectly deposited structures against the wrong spe uh, spectra against the wrong structures. So that's curation of the data by gaming. It's very clever. We also have a project called Spectra School. Uh, this is a project that was initially started by Leicester University. It is hosting um, spectral data of various forms. I'll show you the details shortly. And we've been working on uh, modernizing this site with ACD Labs. It includes things like Spectra School videos, so you can learn a little bit about the technology. They show you what the instrumentation looks like. Maybe a little bit out of date. We will modernize them. Um, but still very, very consumable by students. Uh, here we have an interactive uh, applet. We show the structure on the, on the right. We show the 3D molecule in the JML applet. And of course you can zoom in, in and out on the spectra. And you can start to understand the ranges of the, of the chemical shifts and um, what they're associated with in the molecule. Same for uh, the infrared spectra. And you can see the tabs across the top of the spectra. We've got proton carbon, infrared, mass spec, and UV. And they're there for the, the entire collection of molecules. Uh, we have these uh, little training tables so that you understand different components of the molecule resonate uh, different regions as well as vibrations, where the, what the vibrational frequencies would be, etc. So these are little training tables. And you, we have these helpers that show up here. You see, for example, when you hover over these uh, particular uh, ranges, it highlights what, what it would be for. So similar to what you would find in some, some of the classical training books for organic chemistry. We also have uh, a different mode called the identify mode where you're given information and you're given the spectra but you have to now figure out what it is so just like the old days of you know you have an unknown here's some spectral data please figure out what it is and in this case you're given proton carbon infrared mass spec identify the molecule and here we go Thanks to our work with ACD Labs, who are very strong in the area of web development, they have developed uh, an HTML5 spectral display widget, a modern browser widget, where we can now display the assignments. And you can see here the highlighting between the proton on the, on the structure and the peak uh, range in the, in the spectrum. Uh, this is the zoom in, so the entire spectrum, of course, covers this entire range and we've zoomed in into parts of the spectrum down in the aromatic region. Uh, very nice addition, makes it much more intuitive for the user, primarily aimed at the students, and uh, we're working to expand this capability. As I mentioned earlier, we're the host for the National Chemical Database Service. This is funded by the Engineering and Physical Sciences Research Council for all UK academics in chemistry. It's access to a series of commercial databases uh, reaction databases, chemical databases, available chemicals, crystallography, uh, the CCDC, um, uh, crystal structure database from Cambridge, uh, the inorganic crystal structure database, and this array of databases is growing literally monthly at present. Part of it is the ACDI Lab 2, uh, the interactive lab, and uh, we certainly appreciate it having that integrated. It, it allows, as you can see on the left, the modules. We have PhysChem prediction and ADMI, toxicity, naming, and for this audience, the NMR will probably be of interest. You can search all the ACD Labs NMR databases on here, carbon, proton, fluorine, phosphorus, nitrogen, and you can search by structure, similarity of structure, substructure, formula, shifts, etc., etc. So take a set of shifts, input them, know a partial substructure, and figure out what the molecule might be if it's in the database. And of course we have the predictions in here too. In this case, I did a direct search on cholesterol. The record is there, it shows me the shifts um, in the separate table, etc. And here we've taken the compound and said, assume this is an unknown, predict it please. 
and it gives you a very intuitive environment for displaying the assignments here again because of the same widget based nature to the experimental display here we see the uh, predicted spectra this is the full range and I've zoomed in on this particular area of the spectrum just to check the assignments is the numbering scheme the numbering scheme is shown in the table and on the molecule very nice intuitive environment we're also involved in a project called Pharmacy. This is a, a Framework 7 initiative out of Europe, and it's to increase the value and flow in the marine biodiscovery pipeline. What does that mean? We need to find new natural products. Can we identify them? Uh, the role that RSE will be playing with ChemSpider and some of the ACD Labs tools we'll be integrating, and uh, some of the capabilities we need to deliver is we're going to provide dereplication capabilities. We're going to have algorithms plugged into the system that allow for the replication and we're going to integrate out to the ACT labs uh, case system computer assisted structural elucidation that some of you may know about the ACT structural elucidator so we will be building a natural products database on chem spider by the way if any, any of you are natural products database uh, people sorry natural products people then you'd be interested in our Android app which allows you to see the, nat the natural products collections that we're building at, at RSC. We're going to integrate prediction technologies. We're going to predict the shifts across the natural products slice. We're going to perform uh, computer fragmentation of the molecules using a set of basic rules. Then we're going to allow the user to take the NMR data, proton carbon 2D when available, and mass spec. Uh, fragmentation ions and we're going to allow you to search and it will in theory we can find direct hits certainly classes of compounds substructures etc and those data can then get fed back in intelligent ways to the structural elucidator for the purpose of computer assisted structural elucidation coming soon in the world of spectral data on on our systems we're going to deposit the entire NIST mass spec data set we already have it we need to process it and put it onto ChemSpider we will be uh, we've already taken delivery from ACD labs of their new spectral widget so we will be able to display infrared and mass spectra with full assignments we have more spectral data coming from chemical vendors shortly uh, we are hoping for more spectral data from various sources and we're also in discussion right now about building an analytical data repository to store analytical data of all forms so there's not only spectral data there are various forms of analytical data but you could imagine that we build an environment where tens of thousands of spectral data will be hosted as spectral curves as well as assignments etc for those of you generating data uh, we would hope that any of you that can make some of your data public we would welcome it we're not taking copyright it doesn't belong to us it's we're simply hosting a copy of the data it's available to the community it's specifically beneficial to students for training etc and um, we welcome your submissions also uh, please come along and, and play spectral game and uh, give us feedback and know that your data that you put with us at ChemSpider does feed that game which is very beneficial uh, we should acknowledge our colleagues Alexei Pshinishnov uh, has worked closely with the basic platform developed by the University of Leicester, the SpectroSchool platform, to modernize it to its present state. Uh, certainly working with ACD Labs for the Spectral Widget. We've also uh, privileged to work with Jean-Claude Bradley, Andy Lang, uh, Bob Lancashire and Kevin Thiessen, uh, who gave us the ChemDuel Spectral Display Widget on the Spectral game. Uh, we've got the data from Synthonix, uh, a company in North Carolina who provided a lot of the NMR data, and certainly uh, number of our AC Labs colleagues, Ryan Sasaki, Sergei Golotvin, Pranas Sipadas, who's worked with us on the ACD Labs spectral display widget and the iLab integration, as well as helping us with bulk data processing. And to the many depositors of data, there are many of them who put data up uh, to share with the community, and we are very, very happy they've done that. Uh, feel free to contact uh, us. We uh, we put all the presentations up online and I hope that this uh, was informative. Thank you.